In an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? My suggestion or contribution, if you will, for this series on rethinking the state is to extend extend it uh, a little bit beyond uh, the state itself because uh, to me when we get to the issue of rethinking the state I think it's almost automatically we also have to think about markets because the state and the markets they're always tied together uh, not only in economic theory but also in virtually all social sciences. The standard view of markets in economic theory is that markets quote-unquote work. Markets they are or tend to be self-regulating markets. And if you accept that, then the sort of common sense or mainstream way of thinking about the state is that, well, the state should be there mostly as a facilitator of markets. Or if you want a slightly more technical way of saying it, uh, the state should be there to eventually correct what is called market failures. But not much, mo not much more than that. Okay, uh, my problem with this is that for some of us, I include myself in this group, which don't really uh, don't really address markets as self-regulating. On the contrary, I think that markets uh, actually do not self-regulate, and well, especially for example in finance. Uh, they, uh, they tend to self-destabilize, not self-regulate. But they're not self-regulating anywhere because they are ultimately dependent on contracts, contracts and rules and regulation, and therefore they are dependent on the state. So there is no such a thing as self, pure self-regulation. The state is always there. Uh, the state is the ultimate uh, enforcer of contracts. The state is the ultimate market maker, if you will. The idea that markets are self-regulating self entities uh, relates, uh, uh, obviously, as you probably know, to the theory of of perfect competition and this theory of perf perfect competition uh, has a lot of assumptions that more or less guarantee that markets if those assumptions are in place then markets will be able to function in a way that really uh, they will require very little from the state except let me get to the first point except when there are uh, s when there are market failures that the state then gets in to correct and then gets out. Okay, let me shift to a different paradigm, a different way of looking at markets and competition, and that paradigm comes from uh, Schumpeter, Joseph Schumpeter, and is known in the literature as Schumpeterian competition or competition by means of innovation. Okay. Well, if you depart from this different uh, way of seeing markets uh, and the way markets work, that would mean that, well, markets are basically the place where uh, corporations interact, but they interact mostly by riv rivalry. They are not there just uh, each one doing their own thing. They are all the time, and that's where the where 
the, the, the true meaning of competition gets in place. The beautiful, very nice, uh, brilliant expression that Schumpeter used to summarize how this all work is that well-known expression called creative destruction. So if competition is understood mostly as creative destruction, then you have at least two things which come very, very easily and clearly. First thing, uncertainty, because uh, creative destruction means that corporations, firms, they compete by making new things. If they're making new things, they are creating new markets. They are improving the way they do things. Can, this can show up as a better co cost structure. So they decrease cost, they're, therefore they're able to decrease prices. They can increase productivity. Then they, they, they can put in the markets uh, a product or a productive process that didn't exist before and the other firms are, n are not aware of that until it happens. So you have a lot of uncertainty there. And obviously competition, let's read it, conflict. Because you have competition, you have conflicts arriving all the time. What is the classic Schumpeterian conflict? It's the new versus the old, new firms, new technologies, new uh, products are always competing with the established ones, with the old ones. So the new versus the old is a conflict that permeates competition as a process of creative destruction. If we look at the process of uh, competition and markets, markets as a process of Schumpeterian competition and therefore creative destruction, then suddenly the state has to do or should do what, what would be a logical role, role for, for the state. My suggestion is that the state should be there to manage create creative destruction. So, and this is not uh, one item agenda is a multi item agenda because this includes, for example, financial regulation, how financial regulation gets in place in order to enable firms to get better at innovation. That includes, for example, uh, taking care or, of exit policies or designing exit policies for firms which are being displaced by old firms which are being displaced by new firms. And suddenly there's a lot of unemployment being generated. What should the state do? Just look at the picture and say, okay, those those unemployed people eventually they will find new jobs and in, in, in until they do well the market it's working I would say well that's probably not the best way to address it so the state true for example and then we move from financial regulation to industrial policy so through industrial policy state can do at least two things in terms of managing creative destruction and this is almost like uh, intuitive state could try to facilitate the creative side of creative destruction, meaning while well, channeling uh, funds and facilitating tax code could be used uh, to, to do that and a whole other host of measures could be used to facilitate the creative side of creative destruction in the sense of uh, better equipping firms to improve productivity, for example, which will lead to, uh, let's say, uh, lower costs, we can, which can lead to, at the same time, uh, lower prices and uh, higher profits. So it's a win-win game. game. Everybody gains in that, in, in that sort of uh, arrangement. Secondly, 
again intuitively to try to uh, act as a buffer, not precisely to avoid. You can't avoid the destructive side of creative destruction, but the state can act as a sort of a buffer in a sense of diluting the process, in a sense of providing the training and providing even the employment opportunities for those which are being displaced by the process of creative destruction until uh, labor gets to their next jobs or by, for example, and again we get back to finance, providing uh, finance for firms which are being displaced not to maintain them as failed firms but to give them time so that they can either restructure or they can uh, win down or wrap up in a sort of uh, coherent uh, way instead of just bankrupting and causing eventually uh, a cascade of, of other failures in the, in, in the economic system. To finish up and conclude, I think that rethinking the state is also something that leads, should lead us to rethink markets, which should lead us to rethink competition. And if we do that, and I just gave you an example of how we could do that, it's not the only way we could do that, we will end up with completely different ways of looking at the relationship in between state and markets. <music>